In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about color theory in terms of how we can use infinite color to guide, you know, our senses and guide our personal preferences. This is a really hard video to make and I'm going to freehand this just because I feel like color is something that's such a personal decision. I made this tool because I felt like it was such a personal decision and I wanted to give people the flexibility to explore the variety of different ways in order to get to where you want to go. So I can't really answer many questions for you, like what should you look for when color grading per se, or for example, what you're trying to get out of it. But I can give you some tips and hints into how to use this panel in order to get the most out of it for your color work. For me, I have this image here from Orca Asik. Hopefully I said your name correctly because his work is so beautiful. And I just thought this was such a great image that he contributed for the sake of this tutorial. And what I want to do and I, what I really like about this image is the fact that it has a lot of colors to start out with and it's very muted as well. And I think colors play really well when you have a muted color scheme in the background and just a lot of colors happening that tie together. For instance, let me just click on my navigation tool here for a moment so I don't click on anything funny. Um, in the background, there's blues, the sky has blues, the dress has blues, but you have warm tones like the skin, the background and some of the trees. So it's a, a good base. You always want to consider this in an image because if you have images that don't have complementary color tones when you shoot it, chances are colors might conflict with each other and you don't want that. So shooting an image is really important to get the most out of the color because you want to keep things, keep these things in mind as you shoot it. You have mood boards intentionally shoot specifically so that anytime you do color tweaks afterwards, there's more leverage and room to get pleasing results. And you'll see exactly what I mean. If you're running infinite color on images that might not have a lot of harmonious colors to start with, you might get less pleasing looks just as you run across them. Or you might get, um, yeah, less pleasing looks basically is the best way to put it. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and actually run the infinite color on light. I'm going to hit create, but I'm going to make sure that all of these are highlighted so they all start working. If you're new to Infinite Color, please check out infinitecolorpanel.com where there's more tutorials, education, as well as before and afters and testimonials in case you want to see what other people are up to, as well as our Facebook group at Infinite Color Panel. Now I'm going to hit create and what it's going to do is going to cycle through a bunch of different color grades and it truly is infinite in the sense where it will go through a ton of them. Now the biggest problem that I have is I like a lot of them. So it's the opposite effect. It's, um, it's, it used to be really difficult to get something that I liked. Now it's difficult to pick something that I like. So the way that I go about this is I actually wait for a couple of seconds on each look. I turn it on and off and I kind of understand what do I like about what it did? What do I not like about what it did? It helps me not only explore my own personal preferences, but it helps me guide myself to a destination that I want to go to. And I think that's why color is so hard to explain. It's because personal preferences are almost intangible in how they're expressed. But in a situation like this, I'm going to turn this on and off and I'm going to talk you through some of my personal preferences. Number one is that I really like the warm tones. I like the muted pastel tones. It's something that I think it's, you know, what I'm going for. It's my personality. And I also like how the background started tying together with the dress. The dress became more muted, more pastel -y, less blue, more beige or more like orangey. So it started connecting more. And I like that a lot. Maybe not as intense. And that's where I'm going to start building. So I like this. Maybe not to the extent of which it did. So I could either go in here and see, you know, what had the biggest impact on it and then tweak it accordingly. So I think overall, they all contributed, you know, fairly equally. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of the entire folder here to about 40% or so. So you can see we're getting there. We're getting to that getting to that harmonious balance that I think I'm, I, I'm naturally tending to gravitate towards. To stack and build on this, I'm going to rename the infinite color folder and just call it IC1. Next, I'm going to create it again. So it creates a stack on top of it. And I'm just going to go through them again. I'm going to stop at what my eye says to stop at. It's almost like, you know, when you look at something you don't like, you know, you don't like it. But then when you go shopping and you find something you really like, you stop there for a minute and you analyze it and you're like, why do I like this so much? I know I like it, but why? 
this is kind of that thing. It's like going shopping and finding something that just inspires you. And this is what is used to inspire me and guiding me in the direction that I want to go. I'm noticing that I learn a lot about myself as I'm using this panel because I'm starting to see that it's guiding me towards a warm balance that's tying more warm tones into the cooler tones. And I think I'm liking that a lot. It's really singing to me. I'm not liking cooler tones on this image. I'm liking warmer tones. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because her expression's warmer. You know, there's less intensity, there's more softness. And so I'm guided that way. Um, and again, I feel like this is also getting there. Maybe not as intense. So I'll bring the opacity down. Another thing that I could also do is maybe if I want a overall adjustment where maybe I want to warm, warm up or cool down the entire image, I can go into my adjustment layers add a curve and then maybe go into my blue channel increase it or decrease it to see my preference and I'm going to decrease it so the entire image overall turns a little bit warmer I'm going to go back to my layers I'll rename this to infinite color 3 or 2 and I think we're almost there again you don't have to stack these if you don't want to sometimes in most cases one run over here is all you need and that's why I did it this way, where you have a lot of advanced layers collected together to form a color grade. So I'm going to bring these two together, hold Option, and click on the background. This way, it'll allow me to see how, what I've done so far. I really like this a lot. And I think, honestly, going any further might be too much. I'm going to try, though. I might not use all of them. I might use something like Selective Color, because Selective Color, I'll show you what it does, is... It's just going to add one selective color adjustment layer. If you're completely unfamiliar with adjustment layers, check out our website where we have more videos and explaining um, a lot of beginner tools as well. Now, again, I'm going to turn this on and off to see what I like. And I do like the way it's going warmer, but I'm going to try it again. I'm just going to reshuffle that selective color. And selective color, I think, is the most randomized feature about the panel because it works in every single color. So if I click on it, and go to my properties, you'll notice that under cyans and blues and magentas, they get all tweaked in different ways, in various ways that are completely unique to each other. And that randomness is really inspiring and gives me different ideas in how it's going to be modified. That's actually pretty interesting. The cyan look, that cyan and um, Warm tones, I think, looks really good. Maybe not to that extent. I might tone it down just a bit. I think that looks pretty good. So there you have it. I think, you know, I'm really loving this. I wouldn't change it any further. I'm happy with it. Um, this can only become a problem if you are hard to please or maybe you see too many looks that you like. And the good thing is you can save um, your folders. All you need to do is check out the video regarding saving your layers to your libraries. And it has an answer on how you can do that. But there you go. I'm going to turn this on and off. And you can see exactly how I use the infinite color panel to guide it to exploring what I want to do and exploring my own personal preferences and figuring out what exactly I liked. Now, as always, I'm so interested to see what you do with this information. Please join our Facebook group at infinite color panel or tag us on Instagram at infinite color panel and show us what you do because we, we are always looking for people and what they do to feature them.